Phonograph record processing represents a significant part of the Stereo Lab software suite, as shown by the number of menu items and its settings dialog entirely devoted to phono processing. And that's because Stereo Lab has an ambitious aim that it provides the very best signal processing and equalisation for any phonograph or gramophone record, from the earliest acoustic recordings to modern LPs. So let's start at the beginning with pre-electric or acoustic records. Acoustic recordings are those records made before about 1926, and in these recordings it was simply the energy of the sound of the musicians themselves captured via an acoustic horn, which drove the mechanical stylus and engraved the groove in the wax master. These early discs require special treatment in played with modern record pickups and Stereolab provides this. The coming of radio in the 1920s was pretty much uh, the nemesis of record companies because following the introduction of radio, a record sales crashed from over 100 million records sold in 1921 to less than 6 million 10 years later. Not only was music free on the radio, but the sound quality was far superior to the mechanical recording of the gramophone. It was clear that record companies needed to up their game if they were to survive. And that improvement came from Bell Laboratories, which was the research division of the US telephone company AT&T. Bell developed an electric system of recording, which Western Electric, the manufacturing arm of AT&T, called the Westrex Electric Recording System in 1926. An essential part of the Bell system was roll-off in the intensity with which bass frequencies were fed to the electrical recording cutter. This filtering was universally known as turnover. When record collectors talk of turnover frequency, it's to identify the frequency at which this filtering is applied. And we have a, a range of different turnover frequencies appropriate to, to all gramophone records of that period. As time went on, in addition to this base filtering idea, the treble frequencies were boosted too during recording, and this meant that the treble could be toned down on replay and that helped reduce surface noise. This strengthening of the treble signal is called preemphasis, and it's also an innovation stolen from radio. Now these two ideas of turno and preemphasis were so widely regarded as a good idea that more and more of each was added through by various companies throughout the 1940s. The choice of frequencies at which to cut and which to boost is known as the recording characteristic and there were many. And uh, we have, we believe, an encyclopedic um, range of, of different recording characteristics, uh, different turnovers, different preemphasis within the software. Now eventually turnover and preemphasis such a good idea that they almost met in the middle, which is more or less where we are today in what is known as the RAAA characteristic, um, the one with which all modern records are recording. And of course we support that. So let's have a look at the menus for equalisation. So we're looking at uh, um, RAAA, that's modern equalisation. Now looking at historic, we have a whole range of historic DECA, TELDEC, NAB, Columbia. Uh, and just notice that um, if you hover on, the, um, on any of the equalizations, you have a context-sensitive help which pops out. And that's a, a quick way to, to choose which is the appropriate equalization. Although we do also, with the software, uh, publish our own equalization guide to help you to select the appropriate equalization given the date and provenance of the disc.